In this video, we're going to be focusing our attention on part C of problem 81, which says that the soup of S plus T is the soup of S plus the soup of T, where S plus T is defined in the obvious way. We're simply going to be adding the elements of S to the elements of T. To get started, we are going to let P be the soup of set S, and we are going to let Q be the soup of set T. Our goal is to show that P plus Q is the soup of S plus T. And in order to prove this, we have to do two steps. The first thing is, is that we must show that P plus Q is an upper bound for the set S plus T. The next thing that we have to do is that we then have to show that if I take a number a that is known to be less than p plus q, then a cannot be an upper bound for the set s plus t. This is the standard way that we show things are soups of particular sets. So let's get started on that first task. I want to show that p plus q is an upper bound for my set. Well, I need to start with letting Z be an arbitrary element of S plus T. Now, what I know is the following things. I know that because Z is in S plus T, Z is equal to little s plus little t, for some little s inside set s and little t inside set t. I also know that little s is going to be less than or equal to p, which is the soup of set s, and I know that little t is going to be less than or equal to q, which is the soup of set t. And now all I have to do is look at this. Z is equal to S plus T, but S is less than or equal to P, so S plus T is less than or equal to P plus T. This is because S is less than or equal to P. And T is less than or equal to Q, so P plus T is less than or equal to P plus Q. This one is because T is known to be less than or equal to Q. So, my arbitrary element is indeed less than or equal to P plus Q. So, P plus Q is an upper bound for my set S plus T. This statement here is actually going to be true for every element inside the set S plus T because I started with an arbitrary element. So we have the first part of the proof done. Now let's move on to the next part. So I now need to show the following. If I take some number that is strictly less than P plus Q, then I can find a Z hat inside the set S plus T such that A is less than Z hat. Um, so how am I going to do this? Well, I'm going to start by drawing a number line. So here's a number line. Uh, let's get that number line a little bit straighter. So here's a number line. And what I want to do is I want to put P plus Q on this number line, and A is less than P plus Q, so A is down here. And I want to notice that there is space here, and I'm going to call that space delta and delta is this space. Now what I know from this is that A is equal to P plus Q minus delta. And I know that delta is bigger than zero. Well, I can rewrite this in, uh, by doing the following. A can be thought of as P plus Q minus, well, delta is equal to delta over 2 plus delta over 2. And I do want to note that delta over 2 is also bigger than 0. So A now can be rewritten as P minus delta over 2 
plus q minus delta over 2. And the reason this is important is that this lets me build number lines for p and q and use the definitions of sup of s and sup of t to get what I need to construct the z hat that I'm after. So what I now know is this kind of stuff. I'm going to look at a number line for p. So here is p, and here is p minus delta over 2. And p is the soup of set s. And that means there exists an s hat inside s such that s hat is strictly bigger than p minus delta over 2. That s hat is in this half open interval. Well, I can do that same kind of thing for the Q uh, number as well. So let's draw a number line for Q. So here's another number line. Q is here, and Q minus delta over 2 is here. Q is the soup of set T. So I know that there exists a T hat inside set T, such that t hat lives inside this half open interval. In other words, t hat is at least as big as q minus delta over 2. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to look at s hat plus t hat. Let's let z hat be s hat plus t hat. Then z hat is clearly inside set s plus set t. And now look at this. What can I do? I can say the following. Z hat is S hat plus T hat, but S hat is bigger than P minus delta over 2. So S hat plus T hat is bigger than or equal to P. Oops, not bigger than or equal to. It's strictly bigger than. So s hat plus t hat is strictly bigger than p minus delta over 2 plus t hat. And this is because s hat was chosen to be bigger than p minus delta over 2. But t hat, remember, is over here. t hat is known to be strictly bigger than q minus delta over 2. So I can say that this mess is strictly bigger than p minus delta over 2 plus q minus delta over 2. And this inequality is because uh, t hat is known to be bigger than q minus delta over 2. But as we have saw up here, a is nothing more than p minus delta over 2 plus q minus delta over 2. So this mess here is indeed A. So what have I got now? I have z hat is equal to this, which is bigger than that, which is bigger than that, which is equal to A. So z hat is strictly bigger than A by transitivity of inequality. So there does exist a z hat inside s plus t such that z hat is bigger than a, and that says a cannot be an upper bound for the set s plus t, and that's enough to say that p plus q is indeed the soup of the set S plus T as I needed.